worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Amen. Amen. Praise God this morning. How many of you glad to be here today and sit in the presence of God? Sometimes this is just what you need. Sometimes this is just what you need. You might not be able to say a word, but this is just what you need. Can you speak into the atmosphere? This is just what I need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank and praise God. I want to acknowledge um, our 104.5 representative in the house this morning. <laughs> Cassandra Greer, can you just stand? Let us see you. Amen. We're looking forward to doing some even greater work with her. Because God has got his hand on her. And he's shifting some things in her life. And we're excited about it. We're going to see what he's going to do. Amen. Amen. Is there a word from the Lord? Yes. Turn with me, if you will, to our thing scripture, Isaiah, the 60th chapter. When you have it, stand to your feet in reference to the reading of God's word. When you have it, say amen. Arise from spiritual depression to a new life. Shine, be radiant with the glory and brilliance of the Lord, for your light has come. And the glory and brilliance of the Lord has risen upon you. For in fact, darkness will cover the earth and deep darkness will cover the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, Jerusalem, and his glory and brilliance will be seen on you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. And this, this uh, today we want to talk to you, continue with our series on faith. Today we want to talk about great faith. Great faith. We'll start with great faith. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, your word is blessed. Bless your maid servant in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm excited to be here today. Been really, we've been in four services in four days. And so this morning I had three shoes. But we're going to get two matched in one. I, yeah, it's like that sometimes. It's just, you know, but y'all love me enough. Y'all just act like it's right. <laughs> Amen. But God is, God is good. And we have been talking about uh, us living in the last days. And we have talked about God has had me on this to prepare us for what shall come and what is coming. And I know that when I was young, um, my dad used to always preach about the last days or the end time. And here I am so many years later still waiting for that last day, but still being prepared for it. Still being prepared for it. And so when God began to speak to me uh, about the light that is going to shine in the world for uh, men to see us and see our good works, and then they would glorify the Father, he said, that's why I'm holding back the end times, because there's still people that need to see the light, they need to be saved, so there's good news that the family members that you're praying for have time to come in. But this scripture says, arise, shine, for thy light has come. And, and I, I have been on this, this kick for about two months now, about two months. And uh, we even looked at that scripture last night where I preached and talked about there's a promise that God has. And he was talking to Israel, telling them they were in captivity. And he telling them, come out, come out of captivity. When you come out, let your light shine. This time when you come out, let your light shine. 
But we're going to go through our levels of faith. We have been teaching in Bible study, and I said I was going to try to slow it down. So hopefully the teacher just show up today. But if not, if I start jumping around, just, you know, go with me. Just go with me. But we have been talking about the levels of faith. And uh, I got a, a flashlight in my bag. Can somebody go get it, please? I think I bought a flashlight. I didn't think it was a shoe. But he was telling me that in order to let our light shine, it has to be a reflection. And there are things that have to happen in order for our light to shine. If he is saying, let your light shine, that's it's kind of hard if you don't know how to let that light shine. Am I right? God doesn't give us commands where we don't even understand or we don't understand. So he explained it to me like this. He says, you have the ability and many of us have the ability to let our light shine. But we just don't know how to operate and get connected to the Father. When we say connected to the Father, you can't see this. When I pressed the button, the light came on. And so he said, many of us are sitting here with the light, the ability to connect, but we don't know how to connect. <laughs> we don't know how to connect. And so sometimes we think that our light is shining just because we're holding it. But when the darkness comes, we've got to be able to connect. And even, he says, even in the light, he says, look at it now. You can see it on other places, but sometimes when the light is there, you can't see it. You can't see it, but it must be shining the whole time. It's got to be shining the whole time. And a lot of times our light doesn't shine because we don't know how to let it shine. Then he told me that you have to let it shine by your level of faith. Your level of faith is the button that presses itself against your light and causes the light to shine or causes the light of your life to come on. So we begin to talk about different levels of faith. We begin to talk about different levels of faith. Y'all ready for some teaching today? So we talked about, we talked about common faith. We talked about little faith. We talked about temporary faith. We talked about strong faith. We talked about active faith. Today we're going to talk about great faith. Somebody say great faith. Then we're going to go to divine faith. Someone shout divine faith. And then we're going to go to God kind of faith. The God kind of faith. That's the, that's the kind of faith that we are moving towards. Strong faith is good and active faith is very good. But the God kind of faith, the God kind of faith, when you have that God kind of faith, that means that you are pressing into a place and your light has got to shine and it's got to come on. So listen, let's go to Matthew 8th chapter. Let's work the text the, the Bible a little bit. Not work the text because we using more than one text, but let's work the Bible this morning. Matthew 8, chapter, verses 5 through 10. If you have it, say amen. You don't have to stand. If you don't have it, say hold up. And Jesus went into Capernaum. A centurion came up to him, begging him for help, and saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed with intense and terrible tormenting pain. Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied to him, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word. Someone say, only say the word. And my servant will be healed. For I also am a man subject to authority or of a higher rank with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my slave. Do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those who were following him, I tell you truthfully, I have not found such what great faith as this with anyone in Israel. Great faith, great faith is a faith that responds to the spoken word. Yeah, this is the faith that understands the authority of God. This faith is so powerful because it don't, this doesn't just understand the authority of God. It operates under authority and knows how to operate in authority. 
The problem being that most of us can't operate in this level of faith is because we don't operate under authority. <laughs> we have to operate under authority to understand that great faith means that I can just say it because I understand authority. <laughs> the centurion, by, by simple virtue of his name, century means 100. He had at least 100 people in his command. And if he gave a signal or gave a sign, he, he probably had so many that, that were under his command in different levels of rank that he knew that the ranking uh, uh, people under his rank would know what command he gave and follow it. So he had rank of 100 people. He'd give the uh, word and they would all do it. So he says, I understand I don't have to be, I don't have to be at the Navy Yard. Wherever I am, I can give the word and the people at the Navy Yard will obey. Ooh, let me teach you a little bit. He said, I can, I can be in uh, uh, South Carolina and people down in, 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 well, in England, depending on what rank I am, will do what I say do because they operate under authority. Basically, he was saying to Jesus, I recognize your authority in the spirit realm. <laughs> I recognize you don't even have to come to my house. If you just say the word here, if you speak the word here, God, I, I know that they will hear it down to the fourth generation. <laughs> if you speak the word here in Washington, D.C., they will hear it in Cleveland. <laughs> See, y'all don't have that great faith because we want to stay and stand over, over top of him to see if the word is going to come true and it's, if it's going to operate. No, we say our, our children are blessed. Our children's children are blessed. Our grandchildren are blessed. Our great-grandchildren are blessed. He's not only talking to the lateral, but he's talking to those who are down through the generations. The centurion said, if you say healing right now, to the fourth generation, everybody in my family will be healed. Y'all don't, 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 don't have that. We, we got to understand that what, that's what great faith shows up. And if anything shows up in our generation that don't look like it's here, we have the authority to cast it out. Anything that he said don't look like it's in obedience, I have the authority to put it out of the military. <laughs> Woo. Let me speak to about six people here that have been praying. Anybody been praying for some generations to come? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to live through all those generations to see it. You have to have great faith to know it's going to happen. The centurion said, if you just say the word, just say the word. Someone say, just say the word. Jesus said that is great faith. It responds to the spoken word. It responds to the spoken word. I don't, I don't speak a lot. That's just not me. Then you don't have enough great faith because the, the generations are waiting for you to say it. God, I hear you. He said that's why we don't see what we, we say. It's because we don't say what he says. <laughs> Let's move a little bit on to divine faith. Galatians 2:20. Divine faith. Galatians 2:20 says, "I have been crucified with Christ. That is, in him I have shared his crucifixion." It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith, by adhering to and relying on and completely trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Divine faith is the faith that lives by the principles, the teachings, and the precepts of the life that comes from Christ. 
Mm-hmm. Divine faith is that faith that, that we are so connected to God that we live what he says. And we can't live what he says outside of him. Uh, let me explain. Divine faith is not legalism. It's I do it because I got the power of God in me that keeps on. I've been crucified. My flesh has been crucified. The old me is dead. I just want to live by the precepts and the principles of Christ Jesus. Can I do these things? Yeah, but, the, but I've been crucified. Uh, the old me is dead. Help me say it. The old me is dead. I want to get mad and want to be angry and want to be upset, but I just can't because that part of me is dead. Someone shout divine faith. See, that's, that's, that's where we're, we're headed. I have every right to get back at you. I have every right to take you. Oh, my God. Who am I speaking to? I have that. But divine faith steps in and says, don't do that. Let me work it out. Divine st- Someone shout divine faith. (laughs) I'm not stupid. I got divine faith. (laughs) You're not walking over me. I just got divine faith. Oh, I see what you did and I see what you're doing, but I just got divine faith. I know you want me to respond based on what I feel and what I see, but the only thing that's constraining me is divine faith. Anybody got divine faith? Anybody working on divine faith? Paul said the good that I would do, I I don't do. And then that thing that I don't want to do, I run to do it. He said, oh, wretched man that I am. Basically, he is saying on the inside, get down, get down, get walk in divine faith. It's no sense in getting the principles and the teachings and the precepts of God if you're not going to walk in them. It's no sense in coming to church and learning the word of God if you're not going to activate it through faith. Because the world is waiting to see. They're looking at you because they see what happened as well. They're trying to see how you're going to react. How you are, how are you going to react? Are you going to get back? And how are you going to act? You got an attitude. How are you going to act? Tell them, no, I got divine faith. Because I've been crucified with Christ. When he hung on the cross, the old me was hanging up there with him. Can I talk to six people? The old you had to be crucified because it was wicked. I know y'all been saved and y'all wasn't that bad. But if we caught you before Christ, you might have got hurt. Just, Just help me then. Yeah, but it's because of divine faith. My anger had to be crucified. My get back had to be crucified. My attitude had to be crucified. My feelings had to be crucified. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. And the crucifixion had to take place till I could feel it no more. You have not been crucified if you can still feel it. Can I just talk to somebody? Because dead people don't feel nothing. (laughs) If you're still feeling that you need to crucify that thing, nail it to the cross. If you still feel like you want to get back, nail it. Because every time you don't get back, your light gets a little lighter. The light gets a little lighter. The light gets a little brighter and people start to come to you and say, how did you go through that? Because I saw they see what you're going through, but they see how you're going through it. Can I teach you a little bit? That's the purpose for not you. It seems like it's about you, but it's not about you. It's about someone who needs to make a decision to give their life to Christ. Oh, I know it hurts, and I know you're struggling with it. But just think of, remember, when one person is saved, it wipes away a multitude of your sins. I don't know about you, but I got some things I need to be wiped away. (laughs) 
let's talk about the God kind of faith. I thought this was powerful. When you talk about the God kind of faith, that means you have learned to speak the language of heaven. Let's go to the book of Mark, 11th chapter. Good God Almighty. I think this is where I'm going to land for a few minutes. Mark 11 chapter, verse 12 says, And on the next day, when they had left Bethany, he was hungry. Talking about Jesus. Seeing at a distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to see if he would find anything on it. But he found nothing but leaves. For it was not the season for figs. <laughs> he said to it, to the tree. <laughs> See, y'all didn't understand that. He talking to a tree. You ain't got the card kind of faith till you can talk to an inanimate object. Can I, can I, can I be a little, little real? You, the God kind of faith makes you do things that are outside of the norm. If your car don't start, the God kind of faith tell you to lay your hands on your car and tell the engine you better start. I ain't got money to get you fixed in the name of... So you ain't got the God kind of faith. Do you say, I don't know how we gonna work this out, but phone, you better come on. Someone shout God kind of faith. The Bible says, and he said to it, to who? The tree. No one will ever eat fruit from you again. Come on, y'all didn't see that. He's talking to a tree. He's talking to a tree. Go down. But oh, he's talking to a tree that's in his way. He's talking to a cross saying, but people are never going to have to come to you again. Because the cross is a tree. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all are missing it. You got to walk in the God kind of faith that even the size of a mustard seed faith will move a mountain. <laughs> and his disciples were listening to what he said. Says to me that they were watching him to see what been when he was looking for figs on a tree that wasn't producing. Let me tell you what God says. He says that he was upset with the tree because it was confined by season. They ain't got it. God didn't mean for us to be confined by seasons. He does things in our life out of season. That's why two people can do the same thing and one get blessed and one don't. I don't know if it's your season or not, but he'll bless me even when it ain't my season. Y'all waiting for your turn? Uh-uh. He said, I want you to be blessed outside of the season of blessing. I want you to be blessed. When other people are being blessed, I want you to be calm. But I want to bless you when ain't nobody else being blessed. I want to bless you when it don't make sense. I want to bless you when you ain't got it all together. I want to bless you out of season. Someone shout out of season. Y'all been hollering, this is my season. This is not your season because you will plant any time. I don't have to wait for things to get in order. He'll bless me in spite of myself. I don't have to wait for my turn in line. He'll bless me even then. I don't know who I'm 
talking to but you've been waiting for the job to line up you've been waiting for your education to get in line you've been waiting for your sons and daughters to get to a certain age but God said get in line because my power is able to move out of season if you agree shout yes I see about 12 people that's getting ready to be blessed. You're going to be blessed and you didn't even ask for it. I see about 12 of y'all. Where are you? You're getting ready to be blessed and you didn't even ask God for it. imagination said they would probably say there ain't nothing going to happen. They go Jesus with that crazy talk again. He always talking crazy. I thought he cursed the fig tree. The thing ain't dead, is it? Be careful how you think while God is working. Be careful how you think while God is working. Because the Bible says, then they came to Jerusalem and he entered the temple grounds and began driving out with force the people who were selling and buying animals. That means he went on back to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Tell, tell your neighbor, neighbor, go on back to work. <laughs> he got on with his business. He didn't stand there to look at the fig tree to see if what he said was going to happen. See, when you got the God kind of faith, you don't have to stand over the situation. You don't have to keep calling to see if they're working it out. You don't have to keep going back and forth and calling your auntie, calling your uncle, calling your cousin. What's going on? You just go on about working. You just go on about doing your own life. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, go on about doing life. Ooh, this was good to me because the Bible says by the time I got down to verse number, I guess it's 20, 20 around, it says, verse 20 says, and in the morning, somebody, that's a word, in the morning, y'all need to hold on through the night, <laughs> someone shot in the morning, they ain't got that. They ain't got that. You need to prophesy in the morning. <laughs> that means that weeping is only going to endure for a night. But there's a morning coming. And while you sleeping, he was working. While you were resting, he was working. And while you are in your own word, he's working. Someone shout in the morning. that there's a manifestation. Somebody shall by this time tomorrow you better receive that. You better receive that. When the word of God comes from behind the desk it's a word that needs to be received so that it can be manifested. Someone shall by this time tomorrow Matter of fact, in the morning, things are going to turn around. I'm going to see what he said. What I believe is going to come in the morning. In the, in the morning, the Bible says, as they were passing by, the disciples saw the fig tree. Come on, Elder Rico. They saw the fig tree. They saw what he said. They saw what he said. In the morning, they going to see what you said. I'm in the wrong church today because you don't want to put in the work, but you better speak, arise, and shine, speak it, because in the morning, they going to see what you said. Yeah, they going to see what he said. He said, I'm the head and not the tail. In the morning, they're going to see what I declare today. He says that I am rich in houses and land. They're going to see what you said. But this is the only the God kind of faith. Can I get three people? Just three, because we need an example. We need three people to declare it in this atmosphere. And let God work it overnight. I need three people. Open your mouth and declare it. Open your mouth and declare it. Open your mouth and... 
your mind. But tell them God put it back. Good God Almighty, I hear you. I hear the Lord saying somebody needs to tell the devil. Put it back where you left it. Put it back. Everything you stole, put it back. You stole my joy, you better put it back. You stole my peace, you better put it back. You stole my money, you better put it back. You stole my family, you better. I only need people that really believe it. Where are my people that believe it? You touch my body, put it back.
listen, listen. The disciples saw that it was cursed from the root, and remembering, Peter said to him. <laughs> The same doubting Peter. The same messing up Peter. The same Peter that was ready to be for him, but backed up against it. It's the same Peter. He said, Rabbi, Master, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered. So giving God the glory, you cursed it and it's with it. You cursed it and it's with it. Someone shout, you cursed it, God, and it's with it. Y'all ain't got to say, you cursed it, God, and it's with it. It wasn't me that cursed it. It was you that cursed it. Wait, wait. Peter said, that thing you cursed is with it. I can't even recognize it. It doesn't even have the ability to bear fruit no more. Yeah, what I'm looking at is something that is dead. That thing that kept bothering me, God going to show it to you that is dead. I need about six people. Because that thing that keep pulling you back to it, you're not going to want to do it no more. It has no hold on you. It's nowhere in your heart. He said, I'm getting rid of it from the root. Listen. Listen. Y'all sitting in a prophetic house. That's all I got to say. You're sitting in a prophetic house. And when the word goes forth, it's good for a place to land. Or either it's got to go back to, to the one who spoke and who's the father. Because he said, my word will not return unto me void. They don't, they don't know. I don't know why I'm blessed. All I know is that God has cursed some things that was trying to curse me. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't get that. God's cursed some things that was trying to curse you. Stay right there. Listen, listen. They ain't ready for this. Was on the highway coming back from Virginia. Y'all went with me. We driving. And a car shoots out two from the side. Missed us about this much. Because had it hit me, y'all wouldn't have a bishop today. Unless you think this was just some freak of nature. I looked at it. Prophetess was driving. I'm on the passenger side. My sister in the back passengers. It wanted to wipe all of us out. I looked at it and kept finishing my sentence. That's the God kind of faith. They were saying, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. And I said it like I was saying. Y'all need the God kind of faith. Because he made me a promise that he would never leave me. He'd never forsake me. So when I go to sleep, I don't worry. When cars come at me, I keep my cool. And say, now what was we talking about? Yeah, that was a good conference, wasn't it? God really moved. That's the God kind of Someone shout hallelujah. I 
ain't even got to stop. I didn't even have to go in tongues. I didn't even have to say, Woo, Jesus. Because I got a promise. I got work to do. I got people to reach. I got a gospel to preach. I got souls to save. I got things to do. And God made me a promise. And even though the promise don't look like it's coming true now, I'm just in the night season. Because we can only endure for the night. But joy. Touch five people and say, but joy. and say and as I was saying when you get that bad doctor's report I dare to say and as I was saying that's the God kind of faith and as I was saying yeah that was a good conference wasn't it I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And as I was saying, I got papers to grade. And I, while everybody else is freaking out, the disciples are freaking out because they see the dead with a tree. And Jesus was saying, as I was saying, <laughs> let's keep working as I was saying. Y'all help me as I was saying. Oh, you mad? Get over it. Because as I was saying, oh, God is amazing, isn't he? As I was. When you get that bad doctor's report, what are you going to say? And I... Oh, they going to leave? They gonna leave as I was saying. I dare you to say as I was saying. Oh, I, I got a pink slip. You wake me up as I was. As I was saying, as I was saying, good God Almighty, y'all ain't hold it down on just a little bit. When the church building caught on fire, y'all remember that? Y'all remember the building was on fire? And y'all remember that the, 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 the people came, the fire trucks and stuff came out to the front? And, and people were saying, yeah, I said, as I was saying, <laughs> yeah, the members say, what we going to do? What we going to do? Well, as I was saying, we're going to have service. We're going to have Bible study. And God opened that thing to us up in a matter of a couple days. Got all these offers because the God kind of face said, as I was Listen, let me just give them this. Jesus replied, have faith in God constantly. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up, thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart. The King James Version said, he shall have whatsoever.
he shall say. Y'all missed a good place. As I was saying, <laughs> as I was saying, yeah, I'm hungry, so we're going to stop and get uh, something to eat. And Lorraine was like, stop it, did you see what they did? I said, well, as I was saying, what you want to eat? That's the God kind of faith. It speaks it and doesn't worry, and it happens. That's the God kind of faith. Uh, yeah. That's the God kind of faith. Yeah, yeah, that's when your light really comes on. Because when I started, when I wasn't freaking out, they weren't freaking out. Guess what? Because they saw the light. I was trying to teach y'all, y'all messing with me. <laughs> but that's the God kind of faith that you touch and agree with heaven and if he says it it's going to happen no matter what happens no matter what comes no matter the situation as I was saying <laughs> mm. As I was saying, keep calm, because <laughs> it's going to happen. If he said it, don't you freak out. Don't you freak out. Yeah, don't freak out. It's going to happen. I don't care if you lose everything you got. Uh, that's part of the process. It's going to happen. <laughs> lest, lest I leave you hanging in the air that when our building caught on fire y'all remember we could see down in the basement we could see through the floor this, these floors were good you go in the bathroom you're afraid to sit down because you could see in the base, y'all, who who remembers that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a little cut, a little hole in the window over there, cause we had no heat and no air conditioning. Someone shout as I was saying. Y'all, I need the ones who remember. Kevin, you put something in the window over there, air conditioned, so we could have some air. It was cold in the winter in our services. We had to keep our coats on. For that, we in here praising and frost coming out of our mouth. The landlord would not fix anything. See, they, not, they don't understand that. <laughs> But God sent a fire. See, y'all don't, don't play with me. He sent a fire that started at that wall and ended at that wall. It didn't touch the chateau and it didn't touch the dance. See, they don't understand that. They don't understand. They don't understand. It didn't touch them. <laughs> See, y'all y'all don't understand. But as I was saying, the landlord had to rebuild everything in here. Everything is new. It's up to cold. We have central heat and central. 
and we don't have to pay a thing. And when the people next door come over, they don't understand why is my building dilapidated, but your building look. Y'all ain't got to praise him for that. I praise him myself. <laughs> and the dance studio wants to come and look. How did y'all get bathrooms? How did y'all get this? It wasn't nothing but the Lord. Because as we were saying, we got new roof, new floors, new wiring. Y'all ain't messing with me today. And he gave us a double story. Because remember, we didn't have upstairs. We got upstairs and downstairs. Y'all better come on, y'all better praise God. Because as I was saying, that my father owns a cattle on a thousand hills. And he gonna break me off a little something, something. Because I belong to him. So as I was saying, y'all, yeah, see most of y'all looking because y'all don't understand. Y'all came into the finished product. You don't, y'all don't understand because a lot of y'all are new. Y'all coming into a finished product. But come on, those who saw it before, give me a high five right here. if he can do this he can do that that's why I stand in faith if he said it I believe it if he said it I believe it someone shout this is the God kind of faith I'm healing her. This is the God kind of faith. Y'all came into the finished product. If I don't look what I've been through was a picture. So that's why I trust him. And when people come and they got problems, that's why I don't freak out. Because if you got a promise, I don't care what happens. I don't care. He'll curse the problem from the root. So you won't ever have to deal with it no more. He cursed the thing from the root. We ain't never got to deal with no heat in here no more. No air, walls falling in, no hot water. We don't have to deal with that. He cursed it from the root by making him repair the whole thing. Let me just say one more thing. And while people were laughing at us, While people were laughing at our situation, they didn't know that God was working under the ground and he was giving us more than we had asked for. So let them laugh while God is working. Let them talk while God is working. Let them whisper while God is working because they walking in here. He had the final say. Give God glory in this house. Y'all need to praise him. You know why you need to praise him? Because God has a blessing for you that nobody else 
can be a partaker of. Not the chateau, not the dance studio. This was for us. Tell somebody this one's for me. Tell them this is for me. Tell them this is for me. This one's about me. I tried to teach, but it wasn't working. But that's the God kind of faith. The God kind of faith. That you are speaking and you know it's going to work and you know he's got, he said it. And though he slay me, who know the rest of that? Though he slay me? Though you look like you got the final say, yeah. Well, I trust him. Though you laughing at me, yet I will trust him. Because a Baptist old folk used to say, my father used to say, I, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. Oh, I'll trust in the Lord. I'll trust in the Lord. I'll trust in the Lord till I die. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. I'm going to stay on the battlefield. Till I die. Give God glory. Give God glory. Woo. I promised him that I, I was going to serve him till I die. Because I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And the door of the church is open. 